Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. FSN, it's about what's next. These are tough times and they're getting even tougher. The clock is ticking. The countdown to collapse is well underway. What are you going to do about it? Will you just wait for it to happen? Or will you be ready when it happens? The decision is yours and yours alone. Join myself, Mickey Fulp, Robert Ian, David Morgan, Jeff Berwick, Elijah Johnson, Alan Butler, Gregory Manorino, Daniel Amaduri, Andy Hoffman, Tacoa De Silva, Trace Mayer, one of the world's leading Bitcoin authorities, Bix Weir, Jay Taylor, and Gary Christensen at the Liberty Mastermind Symposium in Las Vegas on February 21st and 22nd and learn how to create your plan to survive the collapse. The last Liberty Mastermind Symposium was one of the most highly rated conferences ever, and this one promises to be even better. Don't miss it. Join us and register now at libertymastermind.us. US. LibertyMastermind.us. This one is going to be out of this world and it's going to be even better because it's in Las Vegas, Nevada. Go to Liberty Mastermind US and sign up today. It's that special time of the month. January is over and probably a lot of stock market investors are happy about that. And we've got Mickey Fulp on to do the major market monthly review. Mickey, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, Just back, got back to Vancouver uh, a couple of nights ago after a disappointing Super Bowl for me. And you were there up close and personal in that nice open stadium, but you lucked out. You got good weather, literally one good day in between snowstorms in my my birth state of New Jersey. Well, that's true. It was a beautiful day in New Jersey. The highs were in the low 50s. I think about as cold as it got during game time was in somewhere in the mid 40s. But lo and behold, as we went out to the bus after the game, there were flurries and we woke up to six inches of snow in in East Rutherford the following morning. I was lucky to get out. Some people were probably still stranded in the New York, in the tri-state area. Hey, you got the last plane out of New Jersey. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> last plane out of Newark. And, uh, yeah, I spent a lot of, uh, a lot of time in the Garden State. And, you know, it's in New York, so you never, you're in New York, you never really get out of New Jersey. So, but, uh, the markets, uh, an exciting month, January, the first month, the first down month since August. Yes, that's true. We had a couple of down months. It's really the, uh, the last, uh, in the last year, it's really the only down month of much consequence other than summer doldrums. Um, all the major U.S. markets backed off their highs finally, but the reasons were somewhat curious. The emerging markets have been taking a beating. Uh, that index was down 7% for the month, uh, basically due to currency sell-offs uh, in, in the emerging markets. And so uh, the major ones that there have been currency crises so far is Brazil, India, Indonesia, Turkey, South Africa. Um, I have a new new acronym for them. They are called the BITS, B-I-I-T-S. Yeah. And I talked a lot before about the BICS, and that includes China. So we traded China uh, for Turkey. Uh, this is very reminiscent to me of the beginnings of the Asian flu, although it remains to be seen if it will go that deep into the world economy. But maybe even more similar to post-Olympic China. And I think if memory serves, in in July of 2008, maybe in early August, I I predicted a a uh, post-Olympic Asian contagion generated by uh, China coming down off uh, the build-out of the Olympics. And 
Curiously enough, that was right before the global economic crisis. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, uh, so all the major U.S. markets were down. Uh, TSX was flat. The venture index was up for 12 consecutive days at the beginning of the year. It has since backed off. It's, uh, it's since gone flat. I think we're probably happy with it flat, not continuing to go down. So the bits are in the pits. And, <laughs> you know, interestingly enough, I'm looking at the chart for the Dow and I'm going all the way back to January of 2012. And Mickey, we haven't had a pullback of of 10% during that time. That is highly unusual. I would even say irregular. And I'll go back to a guest that I had on my show uh, two days ago, Andrew Huzar, who worked for the Fed. He was in charge of QE1. Uh, buying up one and a quarter trillion dollars worth of bonds. And obviously, that's a direct result of it, right? Well, it certainly is. And, um, you know, the, the Fed has created this stock market bubble, but we have all said, and I've been saying this for, uh, I don't know, uh, since early, maybe early Q2 of, of last year, that it looked overdue for a correction. Uh, we need a good correction in the major markets, and let's hope they come uh, because it's not healthy for markets to go up as much as they have over the last couple of years. Uh, we need a correction, so maybe this is the beginning of it, and I, I think that would that would be welcome for healthier markets. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the precious metals were up over the month, and the hybrid metals we're down. So we've seen a back off of, of economic indicators. Uh, gold was up 4%, platinum up 2%. Meanwhile, the more industrial of the so-called precious metals, silver and palladium, were down, down uh, 1 and 2% respectively. Uh, probably the thing we should glean from this is the gold-silver ratio has hit a high uh, for Geez, I'm not sure how long. I have not gone back all the way uh, to see, but it's at 65, and certainly uh, that must be somewhere in the in the range of a of a three year high. So at some point, that ratio is going to get high enough that buying silver is going to be compelling. It's not quite there yet. Uh, meanwhile, Dr. Copper has taken uh, a couple of weeks off because of the Chinese New Year down 4% over the month. Uh, part of that has to do with the Chinese PMI went below 50 for January. Uh, 50 is kind of the, uh, the benchmark for, uh, for a better looking economy or for a less attractive economy. Uh, those things fluctuate month to month. Uh, meanwhile, contrary to that, warehouse stocks continue to drop I think we can look to the Shanghai market, which reopens uh, on Friday, and get some idea of the short-term uh, look for copper. Uh, generally, analysts think that it could go lower. Yep, good possibility there. And then, of course, we go on to our energies. Uh, interesting story there, but I'll let you tell it. Yeah, well, WTI was flat. I think the interesting story here would be that Henry Hub was up 15%. I think that can be directly attributed to the horrible weather in the northeastern seaboard. Um, you know, we have had a very cold winter. We have had uh, one storm after another that continues. The snow was piled high uh, on the sidewalks and the curbs around New Jersey and New York when I was there, although it was warm. Um, anyway, to make a long story short, uh, let's look at the WT high to Henry Hub ratio. Less than 20, we are on a six-month downtrend. As natural gas goes up, for the most part, WTI has held its own. So, uh, to I'm being unable to see the forest for the trees for a long time with Henry Hub. We obviously have an uptrend 
I think that is more than strictly weather related. We'll see when we get into the down season here in the summer. Um, meanwhile, uranium mucking around the $36 level. The market is waiting for the psychology uh, of Japanese restarts. We may expect to see some movement in that in uh, early Q3, perhaps not this year. Uh, but what that has done, that's given me a buying opportunity, and I'm accumulating good old U.S. of A uranium producers at this point. Yeah, makes sense. Definitely makes sense. I mean, it's down so low, and it looks like looks like it's hit a bottom there. Judging from uh, the past six months, it's just not going any lower. Uh, I think we put in a bottom there for sure. And then we go to our currencies, uh, which another interesting story there. Yeah, stronger dollar when uh, the rest of the world's currencies, especially the emerging market ones, start taking a hit. Uh, as you say, the hot money, I might say the itchy money, money that likes to move around, pours into the world's reserve currency. Um, Euro was down a bit, but still pretty strong. Uh, Canadian dollar is about 91 cents right now, and that's that's the low for quite a period of time. Um, but um, once again, the good old U.S. dollar, the Franklins, are still the world's reserve currency. Yeah, the uh, Canadian dollar is down, and the Aussie dollar is really taking a hit. And, yep. and hey, and look at the 10 year. The uh, rate's gone back <laughs> down to 2.67. It's holding pretty steady. It might even go a bit lower. I just have a feeling that uh, any more instability in those emerging markets and the money's just going to come flooding back to the good U.S. of A. Yeah, and so it once again uh, emphasizes the risk in going short a market. Uh, last month we were talking once again about uh, the idea of shorting U.S. Treasuries when when it gained uh, interest rates gained ten ten and a half percent over the month. This month they more than gave back last month's gains. So uh, our friend Lindsey Hall's play is as always shorting is risky. Um, you know I think one thing that's happened is this idea of quantitative tapering has already been baked in to what I would call a disinterested market. So um, we'll see what happens there. But the bottom line on this, Gary, is as these emerging market currencies uh, continue to fall, is who really wants to own reales, rupees, rupias, or rand? I and mean, geez, you know, these are emerging countries. They have volatile currencies. They are always at the risk of default. And, um, you know, I don't... I don't have any money in any of those currencies. Do you? Hey, you know, a couple of years ago, the uh, Turkish dollar was a hot currency, and people uh, people were buying their bonds. And to me, I says, you know, that country just doesn't look good to me. I can't see why anybody would be buying Turkish government bonds. It's insane. And, um, you know... Here we are, two, three years later. Uh, they had the illusion of stability, but uh, you had to be insane to go in there and buy Turkish government bonds. And now their overnight rate is 12%. Their repo rate, weekly repo rate is 10%. And they're going to have to put currency controls in. And all of those countries are going to be doing it. So, you know, the bits have hit the pits. <laughs> and there's just nothing that's going to save them. We, we, if it really starts getting bad, it'll hit Thailand, Vietnam, and the other miracle economies of Asia. And it really could be another Asian contagion. Well, it certainly could. And, you know, I don't know how, how long it goes. It, it seems about a year and a half. And we were talking about Cyprus and, uh, and their currency and the run on the banks. So it just emphasizes the fact that if you are in cash, you need to be in stable currencies or the world's stablest currencies. 
whether whether they are printing like crazy or not, unless we have a complete global economic collapse, um, you know, I prefer to keep my money in U.S. dollars and, and gold. Yeah, and for the time being, when you have billions of dollars that you need to uh, keep in something overnight or for the week or the month, you really don't have a choice. You're going to be stuck with dollars whether you like it or not. Absolutely. So on that note, Mickey, hey, we'll see you uh, in a few weeks at the Liberty Mastermind Symposium. Sign up at libertymastermind.us, and you be well, Mickey. Gary, it's less than a few weeks now. It's a little more than two weeks. So. Oh, God, that's hard to believe. Yes. I can't believe that. Yeah, two weeks. So we'll I guess I better start working on my PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. Thanks you, a lot. You be well. You too. What happens if the collapse never really comes? You need income, and Jason Hartman can help you get it. He's helped thousands of people realize their dreams of financial independence through real estate investing, and now he's got an unbeatable offer for you. He's offering my ebook, Forget Wall Street, Go for the Gold and Silver 2, for free. Just visit jasonhartman.com slash Lutz. The first 100 Financial Survival Network listeners will get the book free. Remember, you can't afford to put all your eggs in one basket. Real estate should be part of a balanced investment portfolio along with gold and silver. Just go to jasonhartman.com slash Lutz and sign up today. When it comes to real estate investing, Jason Hartman is the only person we trust on the Financial Survival Network. So make your money work as hard as you do by building an income property empire. Real estate is America's proven investment. Go to www.jasonhartman.com slash Lutz and get your free ebook today. That's Jason, H-A-A-R-T-M-A-N dot com slash Lutz. That's Jason, H-A-R-T-M-A-N dot com slash Lutz. Jason knows how to help you retire with a portfolio of income-producing property. Go to jasonhartman.com slash Lutz. Hi, it's Kerry Lutz. I recently decided to move my retirement account into physical precious metals to hedge against the coming times. If you want to move an existing retirement account into physical precious metals that you can hold in your hand tax-free, there's no company that can do it more quickly and efficiently than Regal Assets. It took them just 24 hours to open my new IRA account, and all I had to do was fill out one simple form. The best part is that Regal Assets does all the work for you. They cover the setup and administrative costs for 2013. If you're interested in making the same move I did, call 855-678-6620, 855-678-6620, that's 855-678-6620, or visit them at regalassets.com. You'll be glad you did, and tell them Carrie sent you. The Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network.